Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. Here I am joined by my good friend Rocky, who refers to himself as a Bitcoin enthusiast, although I would refer to him as a Bitcoin expert. Today we're going to be talking about a whole lot of different things, some updates with Bitcoin, as well as coin usage and coin rank. Rocky here has really done the research into Bitcoin itself, cryptocurrency itself. He has been on the channel one time before. We did a live format. Today we'll be doing a pre recorded format. But basically, he is someone that I trust to kind of let me in on the actual technology of Bitcoin itself. So, Rocky, I'm going to hand it on over to you. Please, please tell your story. OK, well, my name is Rocky Plumbo. I've been in the Bitcoin since 2013, where I started studying it and learning all about uh, mining back then. You know, when you search for Bitcoin, it was uh, mostly what came up was all about mining. And uh, I was into computers anyway, so that was really interesting to me uh, uh, anyway. So um, I started mining in January of 2014, been mining ever since, and I've been learning more and more ever since. And I started doing, uh, actually uh, started doing Bitcoin meetups um, in 2016. And those ran through uh, about halfway through 2017. And um, I also have done helped a lot of people like split coins and uh, help them with issues with their wallets and what have you over the years. And um, uh, yeah, so that brings us here to today, basically. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for that. So what I really want to get out first is what do you have to say about coin usage? Please aware the people here. OK. Um, let me uh, share my screen here. All righty. And hold on just one second. I clicked the wrong oh, okay. button. And here we go. All righty. Okay, do you have me big on the screen? Yep. Okay, first I just wanted to mention about um, Just Learn Bitcoin, which is a website I'm associated with now. I'm working with these guys more and more. So you can come here to learn about Bitcoin. You could get uh, consultation packages. You can even learn how to trade Bitcoin <laughs> <laughs> uh, through the Crown uh, uh, through the Crown uh, programs here. Um, but anyway, if you would like to learn more about Bitcoin, come visit this site and check it out. There's a lot of interesting stuff here. Um, so, coin usage is what you asked me about, right? Yeah, yeah. So, can you run us through, you know? coin usage and also just why coin mark cap is kind of a fucked up way of looking at things you know coin rank coin usage essentially what are these things right well people use this coin market cap um really for both reasons uh, and they and and really they use it as kind of just the rate rate the coins in general and it's a really bad way to rate the coins in general um it you're only looking at that one aspect whatever you're sorted by now default it 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 defaults to the market cap of the coin. But of course you can click over here to get the volume. And a lot of people use this to determine the usage of the coin. How much is the coin being used? And that's a really, really bad way of doing it because um, it's not really using the coin except for this is that one aspect for trading it. It's just showing how much trading is going on. And as we all know, these exchanges that are, uh, that, uh, coin market cap looks at they're not you know uh the best uh, exchanges and it's all unregulated and a lot of exchanges are accused of you know uh fluffing up their numbers and pumping them up there a bit and there's a lot of sketchy stuff going on so you can't really trust these numbers anyway um so it's just a really bad way to look and see how much a coin is being used i guess it's an okay way to look and see uh, you know, how much a coin is being traded, but you've got to keep in mind about the uh, unscrupulous uh, uh, exchanges out there uh, uh, padding their numbers. 100%. So bet 100%. And not only that, just before you move on, you know, there's something very misleading about um, coin market cap in general, because when you look at a trading pair, not and when I say trading pair, I mean, you know, Bitcoin versus the dollar Bitcoin or, or perhaps like Monero versus Bitcoin, something like that. When it's actually calculating the uh, volume on that, it's not just giving you the volume for Monero traded against Bitcoin. It's literally giving you the 
the volume for both of those and then just aggregate it together, which is actually very misleading in its own way. So when you are looking at things trading against each other that are not, um, you know, trading against the dollar, it's it's just it's taking it even like another step further. So I just wanted to add that on. But Rocky, go ahead. Yeah. So a much better way to, to um, determine how much a coin is being used is to look at on chain transactions. Right. When it's an on chain transaction, you know that coin is being moved for some reason, whether they're buying a product or just trading it with their friends or sending it to somebody for free or, you know, just, you know, a tiny bit just to, you know, teach somebody about the coin or whatever, um, or if they're sending it to or from an exchange. But once the coins get to the exchange, all the trading within, that's not really the coin moving, right? That's just. Uh, well, it's not the coin moving on chain. It's just uh, uh, once a coin gets to a uh, an exchange, they just credit your account. Now, all the coins that you have in your account at that exchange, it's just a spreadsheet at the at the exchange of everything you're trading going back and forth. So you could you know move Bitcoin to uh, some exchange and then trade it for let's say tether to get out of bitcoin if you think the price is going down right and then then you think the price is going back up so you get back out of tether into bitcoin and then you think the price is going down again get back out of uh, or going back up and you want to sell high right so you, you get back out of bitcoin go back into into tether and then the price comes down so you go back into bitcoin back and forth there's all this trading going on and that's all volume but it's not moving on chain right right that's so that's not real book. usage that's not someone who's like interested in in you know you know doing stuff with it like in in real world right. terms right and it's just exchange volume and you know that could be padded also people just sell to themselves <laughs> there, there is something to be said about that there's uh there's a lot of questions in the air right now with some of the more unscrupulous exchanges as you said um so is there a uh, what is the better way of looking at the metrics that you're talking about for like actual real usage right so here's a website that actually shows on-chain transactions right these this is um the current well i I and, the sorry, before I before you go on, what is the name of this website? Oh, this is um, coin.dance. Coin.dance. Got it. Thank you. And um, this is showing you here like all the blocks, the recent blocks uh, on, on the blockchain. And this is Bitcoin. And uh, so you can see here that this block here at the top had 3,000 transactions in it. Right. And then this one, uh, 2,600, uh, almost 800. 1400, 2300, and so forth. But you can see these, you know, the vast majority of these are in the thousands of transactions per block. Got it. So if you, uh, another coin that they follow on here is Bcash. So when you take a look at Bcash, you see under transactions on the recent blocks on Bcash, you see quite different numbers here. <laughs> okay. 60, Very interesting. 62, 67, uh, 12, Christ. 3. Uh, 43, 177. So uh, you look at, look at this down here, 95598. I mean, it's not being used. It's being used for nothing. Okay. So, I mean, I, I saw a video just the other day of Tone arguing with a guy saying that Bcash wasn't used. And, you know, he pointed out that, you know, oh, well, look at the volume. You tell me it's not used. Look at all this volume. Well, that's all trading volume that could be padded by the traders and is padded by the exchanges. This right, right, right here is real on-chain transactions and how many transactions are in each block. And this is a good comparison here because Bcash has a 10-minute block and Bitcoin has a 10-minute block. So it's a you know total fair comparison. Like if you were going to compare Litecoin, that would be different because they have a two and a half minute block. So you'd have to compare, you know, four blocks to one block on got one it, of these chains. Got it. But overall, this is kind of, you know, revealing some of the coins for, you know, real world statistics right here. Oh, yeah. I mean, anybody who says that uh, Bcash is being used more than Bitcoin, I mean, you know, come on, look at these numbers. This is, you know, there's no comparison. Yeah, that's quite interesting. Um, are there any other uh, just random, you know, coins that, you know, people might uh, have lofty expectations of, but you, through kind of looking at, at metrics like this, it's revealed that um, they might not be as altruistic as they uh, present themselves? Well, you know, I, there's 3,000 coins out there. Right, right. And I, know. I spend most of my time trying to keep up with all the stuff going on in Bitcoin. So it doesn't really concern me about all these altcoins. They're all, you know, vast majority of them at least are complete garbage. 
Um, that's know, something it, I'd really you know, like to go into. I don't know if you want to do that right now or or at the end of the show, but um, <laughs> Rocky is a great person to ask uh, to ask about this. So perhaps we'll save that for later. Um, sure. But uh, what about coin rank and, and how is that kind of misconstrued on something like coin mark cap? How is that misleading? Yeah. OK, so let's go back here and um, let's go back to the default of uh, sorting the coins by market cap. This right. is how, you know, when you first get here. And by the uh, way, well, be, first of all, hold on, hold on. Be, uh, before we before we begin, just so we're on the same page, just so people understand market cap, market capitalization, it's really not what I think a lot of people think it is in that mm -hmm. it's it represents the actual liquid amount of money in an asset. It's literally just the last price multiplied by the uh, I believe it's by the circulating supply. So it's quite misleading as you know prices can change in, in, in a nanosecond and is that really representative of the actual money in it absolutely not okay anyways i just wanted to get that out there and right because a lot of coins could have been purchased at a much cheaper price is that what yeah. you're getting at yeah right right so this number here is basically this number the current price times what's in circulation this number here right right and that gives you this number here which which is a which is an interesting thing to look at on all the cryptocurrencies, but it's not an end all be all for for to rank them overall. There are many other aspects of the coins you want to look at to rank the coin to try to determine if the coin's going to be successful at its objection at, at, at its at, at its at what it's trying to do. It, it, it's it's uh, um, you know what it, you know like Bitcoin for example. Bitcoin is trying to be you know the, the first worldwide mass adopted currency. That that's that's what it's trying to do. So um, does this tell you that it's on its way of doing that? I don't think so. I mean, what you got to look at are the developers and the, the amount of nodes that are de decentralized all around the world and the mining, the pure hash power and the, uh, how much is the mining decentralized and all these other features you want to look at and kind of add them all together uh, to determine uh, the rank of the coin. And, um, and you cut, I kind of equate it to going to buy a new car, right? There's lots of things you're going to look at when you go to buy a new car. I mean, maybe the color is real important to you, the styling, the type of car, uh, the comfort. You, you, right. Does it feel good to sit in it? Does it have a nice ride? You know, is the suspension good? And and one of the things that, that adds to the suspension, uh, one factor that uh, determines how well it rides is the wheelbase. It's how far the front wheels are from the rear wheels. And uh, to say, oh, I'm going to go buy a new car today. And the only thing I'm going to look at, I don't care about anything else. I'm just going to look at the wheelbase and the car with the best wheelbase. That's the one I'm going to buy. I'm not going to worry about price. I'm not going to worry about uh, economy, the gas mileage. I'm not going to worry about horsepower. I'm not going to worry about it. I just go to buy on the wheelbase. That's what you're looking at here. This is the wheelbase and buying a car <laughs> Yeah. and determining which car is the best. You, you can't just look at that one factor and say that car is the best. You can't, and you can't look at these coins and determine that you know this coin's better than this coin because it has a better wheelbase, a longer wheelbase. Right. So, so quite literally that, comparing that, apples to oranges. Kind of, yeah. But um, you, you really got to look at the overall picture. Now, when I compare Bitcoin to all the other coins, I mean, you know, like with by all the things I just mentioned, you know, about the the nodes and the mining and the developers. Um. I have, you know, Bitcoin is like, it wins the Super Bowl every year. You know, heavy you're running for the past 10 years, right? T Bitcoin's 10 years so old let, now. So let's get into that. What what really separates from Bitcoin, Bitcoin from these other guys? When you really start looking into it, like looking at these teams, looking at the actual technology behind it, all these sorts of things, what, what really impresses you about Bitcoin that makes it so that you don't really have too much of an interest of even looking at some other things in some, uh, that's probably a bad way of representing it. But, um, you know, what, what really are you looking for that kind of denotes something of, of like true integrity? Yeah. Well, when you look at, you know, how, what Bitcoin's trying to do and, and how it's doing it and, and what is sound money, um, you know, you want, a fixed supply you want a a set schedule for the issuance and, and you want and you want you know every coin to be fairly mined or fairly created you know through mining through the mining process which has a cost to it you know you have to burn electricity you have to buy the hardware um uh 
you got to look at all these factors and, and, you know, and when you understand how a blockchain works, you know that you just can't have any block size you want. There's always a trade-off. You're trading off something else for having this one thing. It's like buying a car with more horsepower. What's that going to get you? Less gas mileage, right? You can't have both. And it's the same thing in, a, in the cryptocurrency. You just can't have what you want. It affects other things downstream. So you have to be very careful when you make any change, because when you do that, what are you trading off? Now, a lot of people say, well, why doesn't Bitcoin have a two minute block time like these other coins? Well, when you have a shorter block time, that makes it less secure. It makes it easier to do a 51% attack. So, uh, in fact, there's a lot of people in Bitcoin, a lot of uh, uh, core developers, or at least there's a few core developers who believe Bitcoin should have a one hour block time. That would make it more secure. So, that, you know, there's just really quick, really quick, will it really quick before you go on? Can you explain why 51% attack is wrong? It, I'm sorry, it would be a bad thing to someone who might not, you know, understand what that is. Oh, well, 51% attack means you have over 51% of the mining and you could mine blocks uh, without broadcasting them. And you could um, uh, you could actually do a double spend this way. Gotcha. And, okay. Um, you, you would you would get all of the uh, block reward for, you know, however many blocks you mine privately, if you could get your private chain that you haven't broadcasted yet you know two or three blocks longer than the public chain and then broadcast all your blocks at the same time you would have the longest chain and that would take precedence and everything would switch over to your chain because you got you broadcasted the longer chain and you'd get all those block rewards and if in the regular chain you sent bitcoin to a an exchange and traded it for let's say tether and then move that tether to another exchange and traded it for cash. Right. And, and that was in the original chain after you started mining secretly without broadcasting. And then when you broadcast uh, your version that you mined privately, you could not have that transaction in there. So gotcha. then that transaction wouldn't exist and you would have just stolen all those coins from so the this exchange. would just be a complete nightmare situation. It would be any, any, <laughs> if that were to happen to anything, you'd, <laughs> it'd be the end of it from the way that I understand it. Right. And so, you know, hash power is very important. And that's why Bitcoin has this massive amount of hash power to secure the network. And the 10 minute block time makes it harder for somebody to do this attack. Um, that's why you don't, that's why Litecoin has a two and a half minute, right? It's, it's Bitcoin's, it's Bitcoin light. It's Litecoin. So it has a two and a half minute. It has four times as many coins than Bitcoin's, 21 million uh, limit. And so it, it it's worthless because it's less secure and there's more of them. And so, um, of course, the whole uh, um, narrative that Litecoin is, you know, the silver to Bitcoin's gold, that's just been completely demolished, just destroyed by the Lightning Network because the Lightning Network is uh, is instant you know, as soon as you send the lightning transaction, it's just there and it's irreversible. You know, that, con that first confirmation is just boom right there. And it's even cheaper than a Litecoin transaction. So if you're cheaper than Litecoin and you're 150 times faster, right? It's one second instead of two and a half minutes. That's, I think, 150 times faster. Um, what happened to your narrative? It just got destroyed. Right. I think you made a really excellent point, though, last time you were on saying that Litecoin having some value, though, is in a, is actually a good thing because it is essentially a test net for Bitcoin. Right. And if it does have value, then that means that hackers and people who want to exploit it will be incentivized to essentially go after it before something goes live on Bitcoin, which I thought was a really good point, man, because I, I really don't want to paint myself as uh, as a Bitcoin maximalist. I, you know, I want to be open, but the more, but every time that I talk to Rocky, it's funny, every time that I talk to Rocky, I, you know, I get a little bit more convinced that, okay, it's going to be pretty, pretty damn hard for, for something to kind of uh, really fill that void, essentially. Um, yeah, yeah. But I, I said, Litecoin's narrative, its main narrative got ah, okay. destroyed. Sorry, I didn't I say Litecoin got uh, gotcha. destroyed. Okay. Its narrative, it, it's it's the it's big, you know, ace in the hole all these years was that, oh, we're the silver to Bitcoin's gold. Well, not anymore. And 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 that was just the first of many 
narratives that Bitcoin is going to destroy, right? The next one is going to be privacy. So Monero with its privacy is kind of like Litecoin with its speed, you know, faster blocks and, and cheaper transaction fees. Right. You've got Monero with its privacy. Well, Bitcoin is going to destroy that too. It's just a matter of time. It's probably going to destroy it um, probably in 2020, maybe so this year. To clarify, Bitcoin is going to have privacy on its uh, on it. Yes, Bitcoin is going to have better privacy uh, than Monero. And of course, on a more secure network because it has all this, uh, the whole total network effect that Bitcoin has been building for the past 10 years and uh, the massive, humongous, ginormous amount of hash power securing the network that, that so, uh, uh, Monero does not have. That's there's that brings up two really uh, important things for me to kind of bring forth. Um, OK, so first things first, uh, I remember hearing and also reading myself that in Bitcoin's white paper, there's nothing, to, you know, there, there's nothing about privacy. Right. Um, so is that, you know, is I guess do you see that as an issue or is it just time to evolve? You know, well, what is a white paper? To me, a white paper is just like a mission statement for a company that's coming online, right? It's it's just an outline for a project that you want to that you're thinking about doing. That's all it is. Right. It's not it's not saying, hey, I'm thinking about making this thing called Bitcoin. Here's a set of rules that we have to follow forever, and this cannot be changed. So it's an ever evolving thing. Is yeah, kind of what you get yeah, at. That, that, now, that idea is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Okay, Bitcoin is a living, breathing organism. It's evolving. It's changing all the time. And, right. uh, you know, there was just an update came out uh, on Christmas. Yeah. Um, in fact, I spent Christmas updating my notes from 0.17.0 oh, yeah. <laughs> to 0 0.17.1. Before we get into that, though, before we get into what that was about, um, that's actually a really good segue. Uh, I think one of the better, you know, kind of talking points against Bitcoin is that if it does go the privacy route, that really would tick off a lot of uh, a lot of boxes for for pissing off the right people and meaning like governments. I, I would have a hard time imagining, you know, a legitimate world government would be OK with actual like private money. Um, I think one of the big things about Bitcoin right now is that it's an immutable public ledger, AK, like i.e. public ledger, very important part. So it, it kind of keeps that transparency with privacy in it that, you know, it's it really does help solve that sort of uh, narrative. I know, I, I mean, it's not necessarily, I don't necessarily agree with it. You can obviously tear it apart, but it's going to certainly help the narrative of, um, uh, of, you know, a government saying this is just used for terrorism or money laundering or, you know, insert whatever bad super, superlative here. So how do you see, you know, that going? I, I kind of see that myself as a negative, to be honest with you. Well, I don't. Um, and it's not if Bitcoin goes to private, privacy route it's when does bitcoin go the privacy route and bitcoin's probably not going to have this you know extremely good privacy on the base layer um the uh, on-chain transactions probably not going to have it now a year ago uh, january 2017 or 2018 uh bitcoin got lightning uh, lightning went live as a second layer on top of bitcoin now that gives you privacy um, so if you open a, if I open a, a lightning channel and you open a, uh, or I open a lightning channel to you and I send you Bitcoin through lightning and then uh, I close, we close that channel. Um, there's no link on the chain that that Bitcoin went to you. So that, that kind of, you know, that kind of gives you a little bit of privacy right there. Um, uh, you know, the only thing, you know, uh, the only reason why you don't want to use Lightning as a you know a privacy tool is because you don't want to you know put a lot of money in Lightning because of the way it works. Um, you don't want to risk too much money in it. I mean, you could put two, three, four hundred, maybe a couple thousand dollars in there. You can have in there, but you know you don't want to put you know fifty bitcoins in there and send them somewhere and then get them out. You know that that's a bit much, right? So. And and that's what liquid would be for, but we're going to talk about liquid later. Um, right, so, right. Um, so what when Bitcoin gets privacy, it's probably going to be through what's called bulletproofs, and that will be a side chain. So it'll be a side chain with a two way peg. So the bulletproof Bitcoin is just like a Bitcoin, just like a Lightning Bitcoin is just like a Bitcoin. Um, 
you would move your coin into Bulletproof and you could trade bu with Bulletproof back and forth all day long, all week long, all month long, all year long, and only go back onto the main chain when you're good and ready, you know, and then all those transactions off chain would be private. And, you know, on chain, of course, is the public ledger. But it, what, what all these transactions are is just like cash. You know, if, if I go to the grocery store and buy something with cash, there's no ledger there. there there's no way for anyone to know where that cash came from or who gave it to me. There, there's no public ledger, ledger on cash. The only time that USD has any kind of trail left behind, any kind of ledger, is if you send it through, you know, the banking industry. Gotcha. Gotcha. And I just want to, I, I just, I forgot to bring this up earlier, but um, when we spoke about 51% attacks, a lot of people are going to bring up the fact that uh, mining in China is pretty much centralized in China being kind of an authoritarian government. Um, you know, it's, that's always going to be kind of like a question in the back of the mind. It's like, what is really stopping them from just saying, Hey, your mining farm is fucking ours. Like go, go fuck yourselves, you know? So in that way it could be controlled because, uh, you know, so much of the mining really comes from that area. What, what would you have to say to someone like that? Who, who's bringing up a point, that point? I would say that mining is not centralized in China. I would say mining is decentralized all around the world. Too much of it is in China. I'd like to see it spread out a little bit more evenly, but I don't see a th threat currently. In fact, it is getting better. I think, you know, last year, uh, 2018 was better than 2017. And probably 2019 is going to end up being better than 2018. So we're headed in the right direction. And if anybody is worried about, um, you know, there being too much concentration of mining in Bitcoin, well, that person never should never, ever touch any other coin because uh, the centralization in mining and all the other coins is way worse than Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin is by far the most decentralized. Um, it is it is decentralized enough uh, to where I feel safe. Um, I would like to see it more, but, you know, I, I, I think we're doing pretty good and we're headed in the right direction. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Um, let's talk about, let's talk about some of those upgrades that you alluded to earlier, man. I, I really want to get an understanding of what, what and where this is heading towards. Okay. Uh, I'm just trying to turn off my, my screen share here. All righty. All right. So on the upgrades, um, you know, we, we recently just had uh, uh, Bcash a fork, right? We got the BSV. Excuse me, I got a cough. <laughs> All good. Sorry, I'm just getting over a cold, but I got a nice mute button here. By the but, way, uh, Bitcoin it, is having a massive rally right now. Oh, that's because I'm talking about it. <laughs> they know, man. They drop in green dildos as we speak. That's, that's, yeah, that's because people are hearing this. <laughs> oh, no, we're not live, so it's not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, they're it's a little bit suspect right now. They would be pumping if it was live. They would really be pumping. <laughs> yeah, man. Actually, on second thought, that would have been a good idea. But, oh, well. <laughs> um, so, anyway, uh, what you were asking me about uh, the updates. Right. Um, oh yeah, I was talking about that we just had a Bcash fork into a BSV. And do you know the main difference in BSV, why they forked? BSV, why, why BSV forked from BAB? Yes. I don't know. I don't know a fucking thing about the actual, you know, fundamentals of it. I just know, I just know it's, it's that Jihan Wu guy versus some guy who has claimed that he's Satoshi, which may or may not be true. Probably not true, but Hey, right. Yeah. Know. Fake Satoshi, uh, Craig, Wright. Yeah. He's um, uh, quite an interesting guy. Yes. Well, there was a lot of uh, issues that they were arguing about, but I think the mm. main one was the block size. He wanted bigger blocks. Right. And, um, uh, BAB, you know, the new Bcash, uh, BAB had, I think, 16 or 8 meg blocks, and they just recently went to 32 meg blocks. Um, but you saw how many transactions they have, right? Right, right. <laughs> Did they really need 32 meg blocks to get that kind of 
uh, you know, seven to 200 transactions per block. That, that what they need is a quarter meg block. That's what they need, a quarter meg. <laughs> um, but uh, they had, uh, so Craig wanted 128 meg blocks. Okay. Right. And I don't know if you saw any of my presentations about uh, scaling by doubling the block size, but it shows that you can't scale by doubling the block size. You can't scale to worldwide mass adoption levels. You need at least 100,000 transactions per second just to even think about going worldwide mass adoption. And now, I mean, that's, you know, 5% or less than 5%, maybe 3% of worldwide transactions all on Bitcoin. You know, without any second layer solutions, just pure block size, you right. would need at least uh, 32 gig blocks. Okay. Well, 30, 32 gig blocks I show in my presentation would take hours to download, more hours to propagate. It take you know at least like eight to ten hours to download. So it's just not verify. really reasonable or practical. Right. right. But you see the problem, right? Yeah. If it takes eight to ten hours to download, verify, and propagate a block for one node. Uh -huh. And there's thousands of nodes around the world. And it, this take this process for one node to do, it takes eight hours. But blocks are coming in every 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Hello, McFly, do you see a problem there? <laughs> yeah, so Craig you, Wright, uh, after he forked his uh, BSV okay. to uh, 128 megs, he did have one block that was about 64 megs. Okay. And it took over 40 minutes to propagate that block. 40 fucking minutes. 40 minutes to propagate a block that's coming in every 10 minutes on average. So you see the math just doesn't work. I, I've been saying this yeah. for years, ever since the block, uh, the scaling debate, a uh, block size scaling debate. I've been saying it. You so can't what scale do by doubling the block size. It doesn't work. If you know fourth grade math, you understand that you can't get worldwide, worldwide mass adoption by doubling the block size. It, it, math doesn't work. So what is, what is someone like thinking, someone like that thinking once he sees that sort of an information, how is that framed? What well, essentially what would be his side of the story or, or is there, or do they just kind of give up after that? Uh, again, I haven't really been keeping up with it too much. I, I don't know. They're not dealing with reality. They don't understand fourth grade math. <laughs> so I would, if I ever just... saw Craig Wright, I'd say, "Hey, um, would you mind going back to the fourth grade and learn math? Because <laughs> if you know fourth grade math, you would understand that what you're trying to do will not work. You cannot move these blocks around that fast if they're that big. The only way to scale Bitcoin is to have second layer and side chain solutions. It's the only way. And that's what Lightning is doing, uh, taking um, a lot of the very small to you know medium-sized transactions off Bitcoin, uh, on-chain transactions. You still have to settle on Bitcoin. You still have to come out of Bitcoin into Lightning, do your transactions, and you know whether it's once a day, once a week, once a month, twice a year, however long you want, you got to settle back. At some point, you got to go you know back onto the main chain. So there's going to be plenty of transactions for the miners. It's, the miners are going to be happy there's with with that many people using bitcoin and using lightning and using liquid and using bulletproofs there's still going to be plenty of on 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 chain transactions it's not going to be a problem i at least i don't see it being a problem yeah it's, it's all going to you know work out the, the, these guys working on this they're, they're pretty bright guys and that's one of the things that you know i determine uh, that I weigh a lot in determining whether a coin, you know, is a good coin or not is, is their developing team. And Bitcoin yeah, so, is just you know, the best and brightest by far. Can, uh, can you help people understand what really goes into that? When, you know, when you're talking about a developer team, you always hear the ships being spewed out. It's like, you know, when someone's referring to like a new ICO or the, or the hot new coin, they're like the team, it, it's, it's an all-star team. They're really fucking good. I don't even know what the fuck that means, but could you, could you help us understand why, what makes, you know, what makes a special team not necessarily in reference to anyone in particular but just what it what is what takes what does it take to actually put some of these things together you know a currency which is gonna be holding people you know a shit tons of money well i mean the overall design of bitcoin you need to know like you know a good monetary policy right and that was all decided 10 years ago you know about how it's paid out per block and um excuse me how it's paid out per block and you know the issuance and how it gets cut in half every uh, 210,000 blocks which is about 4 years uh the issuance gets cut in half all that stuff was 
was you know set in stone 10 years ago. But you know, a developer is really nothing but a programmer. So you got to be a good programmer and you have to know cryptography. And so that's a lot of math. Uh, I mean, that the uh, cryptography is, I mean, you know, that's way beyond calculus in high school. So uh, to do it right and to, to do it best and to make all these changes like they're making, the, like the, the, the uh, changes that I just updated on Christmas on my node that went from 0, 0.17.0 0 to 0, 0.17.1, um, they put in some changes that are like getting ready, that they're, they're like putting in options that are getting ready for the next changes, the bigger changes to come mostly is what it was doing gotcha. um, but the next big chain uh, the next next big change is probably going to have the next version of segwit which i've been calling segwit 2.0 right because we already have segwit but um they're calling it segwit one they refer to the current segwit as segwit zero i just found this out uh, last week so i had my numbers wrong but uh it's the same idea it's just where you start counting from zero or one gotcha uh, but anyway you had we kind of got off track there what was that original thing we were talking, talking about? Talking about upgrades, now? ma'am. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've had something I wanted to say about that. I kind of got derailed there. Do you want to get into liquid right now? Um, well, lightning. Oh, I know what I was talking about. I kind of got off track talking about the um, the block size debate and what have you and how the bigger blocks doesn't work. And Craig wanted 128 meg blocks i wanted to ask you what is the current block size in bitcoin today the current block size the current maximum block size that a node with the software running that's less than a year and a half old all, all the software releases and there's been many that goes back to a year and a half ago those nodes what's the maximum block size they'll accept i'm going to show my ignorance here but i'm going to say 16 or eight um that's quite <laughs> aggressive. Most people would answer that one. Okay, one. But, I mean, no, well, you don't have to answer that one. If you think it's 16 or 8, you think it's 16 or 8. But most people think it's still one. Because okay. this whole block size debate, people were all, do you want do you want segment or do you want bigger blocks? Mm -hmm. And and it was and so before uh segment, all the, the block size were the block maximum block size was one meg. So um so people still think the block size is one meg in Bitcoin, and it's not. It's four megs. It's four. Um, okay. Yes. In fact, off by a little bit. I'm sorry. What was that? I'm off by a little bit. Um, just a little bit. Yeah, I'm going <laughs> to uh, share my screen again. If you could make me full screen. Okay, so here's a screen from that uh, Coin Dot Dance site I showed you before, but that was, you know loaded pages from this morning this is from january 3rd um so you can see here the block size on every block here because we were talking about the transactions in every block and so you can see that it's always in the one or two thousands here for the majority of the time um so this column here shows you the block size and so you can see this is 1.5 megs this is in kilobytes right so a thousand five hundred kilobytes would be 1.5 megs so 1.5, 1.2, 1.2. So I, I, I like showing this because people today still don't believe Bitcoin has bigger blocks. They're bigger. And as you look down here, you see there's two blocks in a, low, in a row that were two megs. Um, so now my point is why, uh, um, how, I just said that the maximum block size is four megs. Well, that's the maximum block size that, a, that the nodes will accept now, but you can't build a block that big yet and still have the older nodes uh, think that it's one meg or less because that's the beauty of SegWit is that it's a, a, a soft fork. So that means it's, it's backwards compatible to all the old nodes. Otherwise, all those old nodes would have had to update and, and the Bitcoin core developers believe you know it's too big of a network to do that and it wasn't a big enough issue it's not like there was a major bug that had to be fixed that you know would would threaten bitcoin you know in general and that then everybody would switch right but this box size debate was too decisive it was too like you know it was kind of like a 50 50 thing or a 60 40 thing it was too close to um you know not it wasn't the vast majority of people could could, could agree on it so they had to do a soft fork 
And so um, SegWit was the best way of doing the block size increase. It's just SegWit is a terrible name for SegWit, the word SegWit. It doesn't like tell you what it's doing. But one of the main things it does is gives you bigger blocks. So when people says, I don't want SegWit, I want a block size increase. What they're really saying is, I don't want a block size increase. I want a block size increase. <laughs> because <laughs> they don't understand what they're talking about. SegWit is a block size increase and increases the four megs. But with SegWit version zero, what we have now, they can only make the blocks about two megs maximum and still fool the old nodes that it's a one meg block. Now with the new SegWit that's coming out with Shore signatures, they're going to be able to make it up to four megs, about 3.8 to four megs, and still fool the old nodes that it's that they're one meg blocks. Gotcha. So that's the beauty of SegWit. And to do that, you know, before SegWit to do a block size increase was impossible. And there wasn't any development team that could figure out how to do that except for the Bitcoin core developers because they're the best and the brightest guys you know of, of any team by far they're the ones that figured this problem out nobody else did fair enough and that's that's one of the things that i love about you rocky is that you can really boil a lot of these concepts down you know you're just big misconceptions and make it easy for someone like me to understand who you know i don't i i don't have time to really learn like all of the little intricacies of it so when i hear someone just you know randomly on twitter because twitter is just the best place for it says bitcoin needs bigger blocks it's like you know to me it's like okay well what the fuck does that even mean but to actually have you go through and, and, and explain that, it's, you know, it's, it's very enlightening to actually understand that, okay, that actually is already true. And in fact, it's just, it's just misinformation that most people have about these sorts of um, actual facts. There's a lot of misinformation out there. I mean, a lot. I consider myself lucky that I started, you know, my deep dive into how Bitcoin works in 2013. Back then, it was a completely different environment. Um, like 80% of the people back then knew what the hell they were talking about. Now, 80% of the people don't know what the hell they're talking about. Right. And so you have to have a way, but I have enough knowledge and I don't know it all. Don't, don't think I'm some kind of Bitcoin guru. I'm not a core developer. Mm -hmm. uh, I know seven programming languages, but I don't know, uh, uh, C++. Um, so, but, uh, yeah, you, you, you got to, um, it's it's really hard these days to uh, start learning about Bitcoin because of that. So that's a good reason to go to just learnbitcoin.com because you could get a consultation and you could get weeks or months worth of research in a one or two hour consultation. There you go. Um, okay, I'd but love you'll to. Get the, you'll get the right information. You won't get all this garbage that's being spewed out there by all the people that don't know what the hell they're talking about. Uh, <clears throat> Absolutely. I have my own cough actually just coming, coming through with my just own a, that cold. Yeah, uh, just a little extra plug there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no it, problem. It kind man. of fit though, right? It fit. Oh, absolutely, man. You know, and I'm happy to, and I'm happy to let, you know, services that I think are probably are, are good, you know, talk on, on a platform like this. Um, I'd love now to talk about uh, liquid. And first I want to frame this by bringing up the MVT signal right over here. And this is a, this is a chart that I typically show. And there's been a couple of, um, the, uh, there has been a couple of big, uh, controversies with it essentially you see this red line right here that represents when an upgrade called liquid went live and there has been some and the controversy is is that that upgrade might perhaps make this oscillator um, which has been 100% accurate in the past no uh, no longer relevant no longer accurate and again if you're unfamiliar with this you know it's just the sim it's just a network value divided by the daily transaction value and then interpolated using forward back moving averages to create a smooth line but keywords here network value divided by the daily transaction value so i'd love to hear rocky's um thoughts on this i've not spoken to him about this before so this is this is gonna be fresh for me and i want and really i want to keep an open mind with this because this is one of the big metrics that i am using to denote for my own analysis you know when bitcoin actually bought him so take it away um what is that the volume what did you say the volume so the MVT signal uh, going back right over here that is the network value divided by the dri the the daily transaction value essentially the daily transaction value. Yeah, right. just to let you know, I can't see what you're doing. I can't see. Right, your right. Thing. Do you want me to send you um, this uh, link? 
No, that's okay, because I'm okay. familiar with what you're talking about, but right. I can't see specifically what you're pointing out right now. Gotcha. But okay. if it has something to do with on-chain transactions, yeah. you're going to have a big problem with this uh, indicator going forward, because as more and more people use Lightning Network, mm -hmm. that's off-chain. And so, again, that's going to hide uh, you know, the volume of Bitcoin moving, right? Right. And the same thing with liquid so liquid hold on hold on just to clarify those transactions will not show up on this oscillator that's correct got it okay uh, that would be a huge that would be a huge thing wrong with it then yes it's gonna he's gonna have to modify this indicator uh uh to account for this somehow um because it's not going to see lightning transactions it's not going to see liquid transactions it's not going to see any other uh, side chain or second layer solution coming, you know, going forward. They're all off chain. Got it. So that uh, I'm going to have to really put that one in the back burner now. And I really do appreciate you, you know, offering clarification on this because that's something that, you know, I would have gone through and forwards blindly with. Um, well, so I need to reset. It's something I've studied. Um, it's just hearing what, you know, just kind of vaguely knowing what that, MVT signal is and you know mm -hmm. how lightning and liquid works and, and me just trying to you know generally put it together I haven't really studied it gotcha um but I, it's I mean it sounds like just through the actual metrics of it that's going to drastically you know fuck around with it essentially um can you explain what liquid is like well, exact liquid, it, sure liquid is a, a federated side chain which means you have to apply to be in the uh the the side chain you have to get approved and and that but that's only for getting in and out of bitcoin but uh what this side chain is is it's a side chain of coins that have a two-way peg to bitcoin so it has the same value as bitcoin these bitcoins are held and then you know you could think of them as being held like kind of like joining a poker game right you buy into the poker game get a bunch of poker chips you play poker all night move everything around and then you come out and get you know whatever chips you have, you could get you know dollars back for those chips. That's kind of like going in uh, liquid, which is also kind of like going in lightning. It's really the same thing for that too. Uh, um, well, lightning is different, but you could still think of it that way. It's a good way to kind of you know think of it. But <clears throat> um, so, except for the way lightning is set up in its federation, it's uh, more trusted for larger amounts. So where Lightning Network is um, for, 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 well, Liquid is for larger, yeah, Liquid's for larger amounts, Lightning's for smaller amounts. But uh, so Liquid, you could move a large amount of Bitcoins from like one exchange to another exchange, you know, for doing uh, arbitrage trading and, um, uh, really, anyone could use Liquid if you just get a Liquid wallet or a wallet that has the Liquid feature on it. Just like there's Bitcoin wallets now that have Lightning. In the future, there's going to be Bitcoin wallets that have Liquid. And as long as you get the Liquid coins from one of the federated, you know, approved uh, uh, companies or whatever you want to call it involved in the in a federated chain, you could get the coins from them trade them with back and forth with people and then you'd have to go back to one of those uh federated uh users to get back into bitcoin so you'd have to do it like on one of the exchanges uh to exchange it but you couldn't like ex like i couldn't exchange liquid bitcoin for bitcoin with you but i could send you liquid bitcoin right gotcha. and that's a two it's a two minute transaction so it's finalized in two minutes mm -hmm. and, and so it's large amounts in two minutes where lightning is small amounts in one second. Okay, awesome. Did that, did that <laughs> yeah, that that makes sense to me. So that's a good thing because I'm usually very very slow with understanding. Like I just you know, um, these sorts of these sorts of topics, like the actual intricacies of them. Could you you, you alluded to an upgrade earlier um, that came out on Christmas? What what was that? Oh, it was just, you know, going from 0.17.0 to 0.71. There wasn't any mm -hmm. major thing in there. Like I said, it was just a few gotcha. commands and things they were adding okay. um, to, to kind of prepare for future updates, which yeah. I think the next one is probably going to be uh, 
SegWit 2.0 or Mast or both. Is that um, is that like the next big thing? Yeah, I I've been waiting for Snore signatures for a good year and a half. Um, there there were rumors that Snore was going to be out late 17 2017, yeah. um, and then so I thought for sure we'd have it by late 18, and right. you know now here we are 19. But I do believe we're going to get it first quarter, second quarter of 2019. Um, but you know that's going to give us virtually four meg blocks as long as everyone's using SegWit, and that's another point I'd like to make. Okay. Switch to a SegWit wallet. If you're not using SegWit, you got to switch. The, the transactions are smaller, which makes them cheaper. And so it's cheaper for you. Anybody complaining about, oh, it's too expensive to use Bitcoin. Well, you know, that was a year ago. Uh, all the transactions I've been doing for the past nine, 10 months have, have all been under, oh, I don't know, uh, 16, 17 cents. If I go back to 10 months ago, if I go back six months, they've all been under six cents. If I go back three months, the vast majority of them were under four cents. Yeah. Um, so it's pretty cheap to do transactions these days. But I mean, look, we're at the bottom of this bear market and everybody's down on Bitcoin because of the price. But, you know, 2017 is going to repeat whether it's 2019 or 2020. We're going to have another bull market. And when it does, it's going to bring a lot of people again in again. And when that happens, we're going to have a lot of transactions again. And you're going to wish that you listened to Rocky back in January of 2019 and switch to SegWit because your transactions would be much cheaper if you would have switched. Yeah, I hear you. I, I hear you, man. And, you know, it's, it's one of those things that I always have to repeat because, you know, I've been bearish for quite a long time. But overall, you know, I am I am with you there that I am bullish, you know, long term, essentially, as this essentially being a viable type thing. You know, you look into what's coming up and, you know, you've, you, you, you've talked about a lot of it, but I really want you to get into like what, you know, what are the next like big things coming up for Bitcoin? What are you most excited about? What do you want people to know? <laughs> Well, I'm really excited about Schnorr coming out here soon. I, I just can't wait for Schnorr. It's, yeah. it's just going to be awesome. And then there's another big update coming out soon. We're probably going to get called MASS. That's okay. just an acronym for um, Merkleized Abstract Syntax Trees. And so that's going to help, again, with Bitcoin's privacy. It's going to set some things up for making things private. It's going to uh, make the blockchain more efficient. Um so you could actually have maybe bigger blocks and it still will take less time for the nodes to process them. Um, so uh, it, it's going to add, it's going to make Bitcoin just more efficient. It's basically how you could think about it. And there's gotcha. another update called Taproot, which again is, uh, Taproot is kind of needed for Schnorr. So that's probably going to mm -hmm. come out either right before or with, with Schnorr, uh, which, you know, a SegWit 1.0. Um, there's another one called graph root. I'm not really too sure what that one does, but I think it has something to do with the, uh, it's going to probably uh, be, it has something to do with efficiencies. There's another update called dandelion. And that one's really interesting. This has to do with privacy. Um, cause when you broadcast a transaction, um, it typically will go to like the nearest node to you geographically. Mm hmm and you'll send that transaction you'll, you'll broadcast that transaction to the node and from there that node will validate that transaction and then propagate it to eight to ten other nodes and so you could kind of determine you could kind of uh, look at the blockchain and find out where all these transactions originated and if you could look at like all my transactions you could see where they originated and you could get my general geographical location in the world Gotcha. So that, that, that's a privacy issue. So what Dandelion does is it will hop your transaction four or five times to random nodes around the world and then explode from there. Kind of like a Dandelion has that stem that shoots uh. up and then, <laughs> then, then flowers that, 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 that seed pod thing that yeah. you can blow and make go fly everywhere. By the way, so, just as an aside for anyone out there looking at Fibonacci's, the Fibonacci ratio is actually represented in the Danny line like little seeds, just so you know. <laughs> Anyways, go ahead. So um, this is a really good update. It's going to help again with the privacy. Um, and then there's the Mimble Wimble. And yeah. Mimble Wimble is just so freaking awesome. It's, it's really a new way of doing a blockchain. In fact, okay. 
Bitcoin could not change the Mimbo Wimbo. It, it it just simply couldn't. It there's um the way Mimbo Wimbo works is it's it's really not a blockchain. It's a new way of doing uh, how should I put it? It's a new way of doing value transfer, a, a, a value transfer ledger without a blockchain. That's kind of like a just a dynamic ledger that's constantly changing uh, what addresses hold what. But as soon as the address doesn't hold anything, it, all the coins are moved out. It gets removed from the ledger. Okay, so that so would... there's no history there, and so that that would be a major improve improvement on privacy. Because you couldn't gotcha. look up and see where coins have been coming from, because ah, it's only keeping the current, okay. it's only keeping the current uh, uh, stats for, you know, you know, what addresses have these coins and where they came from, but nothing beyond that. Gotcha. Okay, that so <laughs> that is really impre- that is really cool. Yes. Yeah, so it's just a dynamic ledger as opposed to a blockchain, um, but. It's yeah, it's really interesting. What's what's like the time frame for something like this? Um, is, is do you have any idea on that? Well, like I said, Bitcoin couldn't adopt this, you know, at, on the main layer because mm-hmm. it would just destroy Bitcoin, right? But it, Mimble Wimble could be another side chain or second layer okay. solution, pr- probably a side chain. Yeah. Um, but there are other coins that are coming out. In fact, on January fifteenth, uh, a week and a half from now. Um, there's going to be a coin coming out called uh, Grin, and it's going to be based on Mimblewimble. And I think this is great. It's going to be a real life. Uh, it's not a test net. It's going to be a real life uh, network with real value. And uh, to have that out there working it uh, before Bitcoin gets it, I think that's great. It's kind of like Litecoin got Segwit before Bitcoin got Segwit. And, and and that is still the uh, use case for for Litecoin. You know, we talked about how Lightning destroyed Litecoin's main use case, but it still has another one, a, t- a, a test net with value for Bitcoin. And um, so uh, uh, I think this grin is basically the same thing. Um, and also uh, talking about the real live uh, test net for Bitcoin, Monero um, I don't know if it's not using ring signatures anymore. I think it's it did its last update. It did get some kind of bulletproof update. I don't know if it's completely wiped out the signatures or m- modified the ring signatures to include some kind of bulletproof scheme. But um, it looks like Monero has either switched or will be switching soon to bulletproofs, which again I think is a great thing. Let let that let them test it out there, and when you know, we get these, these things, you know, have proven history on a network with real value. Then it goes to Bitcoin with, you know, all the security on the base layer of Bitcoin and um, Bulletproofs is a, again, a side chain to Bitcoin. And you could have your privacy in that side chain, just like Got it. Liquid would add privacy, right? Because those mm-hmm. transactions disappear after a time. There's no history there. And and the lightning has uh, has privacy too, um, so it's Bitcoin's getting more and more private. It's going to be way private, more secure than any other coin out there. So for you know, if if you think that Monero or Zcash or any of these privacy coins is you know has a real future in becoming the privacy coin for worldwide mass adoption, I think you're wrong. It's going to be uh, Bitcoin in conjunction with some kind of side chain or second layer solution. Got it. Got it. Yeah, that is uh, that is quite enlightening. You know, that is that is inc- that is incredibly enlightening. Um, okay. Um, there's uh, man. There's there's another question that I wanted uh, I wanted to ask you. Now it's slipping my mind, so I do apologize about that. Um, fuck. <laughs> is there anything else um, you wanted to say while I'm kind of uh, regaining my thoughts? Um, no, you know, that was all of the topics I wanted to cover today. How, how long has the show gone on? I think we've been going for a little bit over an hour right now. Yeah, that's probably good. You know, you don't want to run too long. Like the last time I was on, we ended up going <laughs> for three hours. 
taking questions yeah, from the audience. Man. That was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun that show. Yeah, yeah. I'm curious. Uh, I'm curious for the people commenting on here. Would you rather have done this live or uh, or pre-recorded? Because uh, we could do it. I mean, I mean, Ro Rocky and I are friends, so we could certainly have them on live again. Um, so please do let me know. But um, yeah, man. Well, you know, also, the last time I was on was six months ago. So if you want to yeah. make this a biannual thing, I'm all in. <laughs> absolutely man absolutely it's good to it's good to have someone here for fundamentals because you know i can look at the charts i can do the tentacles and i've spent my life's energy learning that but to really understand you know the fundamental side of things i want to know and be in contact with someone who's you know essentially dedicated their life towards that sort of thing in the, in the same way that i have for tentacles so yeah man it really does help to have someone like rocky here just to you know clarify these sorts of things and and, and again like i said there's so much misinformation out there and uh you know you, we get stuck in these echo chambers right you get stuck in these echo chambers that just keep on fucking perpetuating the same you know talking points and whatnot and to actually for, for Rocky to actually go through and say, hey, you know, the block size, you can actually see it right here. It's documentary. It's verified. You can look it up. Here it is versus something else. And, you know, you, you can see it for yourself right there. That is exactly what I'm looking for. So, you know, that is a true value of uh, of, of having someone like Rocky on. Um, you know, you know, I, I, you know, you know, I'm a big fan of your show, right? <laughs> I watch your show all the time, but a lot of times because of the time difference, I can't mm -hmm. watch it live. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I watch all the time and, and I, you know, you read all the comments and I hear when people ask, you know, a fundamental question, you're like, oh, I'm sorry. I just don't know that. It's like, oh, yeah. man, I wish I was on his show right now. Yeah, man. Yeah, exactly. You know, and it's for me, it's the most appropriate thing to say something like that because I don't want to get something wrong. Um, you know, I, I know it's like it's not like a true responsibility to get it to get it right all the fucking time. You know, no one can be, yeah. you know, truly perfect. But at the same point in time, I, you know, that's not my area of, uh, of, of, of expertise, I would say. So, yeah, you yeah, know what man. you need to do, Crown, is, is when they ask these fundamental questions that you don't want to answer is, is write them down, make a list. And in six months when I come <laughs> back, to you. we'll just go down the list. <laughs> yeah, we could do that maybe sometime, man. That would uh, that'd be nice. Um, well, I think I think with that note, then we'll probably shut this guy off. Um, would you would you like to let people know where they can find you? And I'm going to put you on yeah. full screen once again. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me share my screen and, um, you know, you can find me, you, you, you could send me an email at, uh, Rocky Palumbo at outlook.com, but you can also, I'm working, uh, more closely these days with the uh, good people over there at just learn bitcoin.com. So, um, I'm doing a lot of the consultations there. If you go to request a consultation, you could do just like a basic consultation or you can learn how to accept Bitcoin payments in your business. And this is the big one we've added here is the long-term storage and end of life planning. And we've come up with a system here that is really, really good. And what gave us the idea of doing this is there's another, let's say company out there has to do with a house that is offering this service that will set up this uh, multi-sig uh, wallet for you and, um, and help you with your end of life planning. But guess what? They charge $10,000 to set it up and then $10,000 a year maintenance fee. So with this package <laughs> here, um, you know, we got, you can see the prices here much, much cheaper. And we teach you how to do it. You will learn how to do your own multi-sig wallet. And, um, and we will show you, uh, you know, a good way of planning, you know, for who gets your Bitcoin in the unlikely event of, you know, your demise or not unlikely, but unwanted. Um, <laughs> everybody, it's going to happen to everybody sooner or later, right? Not until so, I upload my conscious into the blockchain, man. Yeah, there you go. Um, so, so yeah, I'm really excited about this package here. Um, I, I just love showing people how to uh, create a multi-sig wallet. It, it is kind of confusing. It's nice to have somebody just to explain, go over and explain everything for you. Um, but this this line here really says it all. You know, we take the mystery out of multisig. Um, awesome. Um, what about Twitter? Do you guys have Twitter? Um, there is a Twitter account. I don't know what it is. I think offhand. it might be hiding in the top right over there. If you uh, click, give it a little click. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> is it this one here. Yeah, where can people find I don't you? I want to click it and have it come up under my uh, okay. under personal account. Well, uh, then for. Oh yeah, I see it in the bottom left there. It says just learn BTC. 
Just Learn BTC, at Just Learn BTC. Awesome, man. Well, I think on that note, we'll end it. Um, again, Rocky, massive thank you for joining us. I uh, really do appreciate Rocky just, you know, spending a few, uh, spending an hour here, you know, basically going over some of these big, important upgrades and some also fallacies as well, going through the coin mark cap and showing kind of the, the, <laughs> the bullshit going on on, on there. Um, so as always, Rocky, it's been a pleasure, man. And uh, thank you. Hey, thanks for having me back. Uh, let's do it again. It's fun. Absolutely. All right, guys, take care and I'll speak with you guys soon.